Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Management 3064, Cornerstones of Entrepreneurship, and I'm Ron Poff. Today, we'll be discussing, uh, discussing Lecture 3 and looking at leaps of faith and the power of uh, dashboarding. So as we know, we kind of went through uh, in the last uh, session, we looked at analog and antilog processes and really kind of understanding how we can benefit uh, from those uh, perspectives and obviously the successes and the failures and how we can utilize those in our business model uh, process. Uh, let's just take a quick look here at module three and the learning objectives. Uh, the goal here is to look at critical leaps of faith, uh, really with a response to gaps um, and using analogs and antilogs um, to design a new business model. Because obviously at some time, and as, um, you know, as our author of the, of the book, Mr. Mullins, uh, talks about, at some point we exhaust those, right? Uh, we, we, we can go through and have an ability to learn from other custom, uh, companies, but at the end of the day, uh, we can only get so far, right? The other part is look at the uh, structure of effective uh, leaps of faith, uh, more specifically hypotheses, right? And then as part of module three and in your um, exercises, you'll actually be designing a critical hypothesis um, in response to a, a perceived market uncertainty. So lots of, uh, lots of great information and uh, learning objectives uh, within module three. You'll recall this particular uh, graph, or excuse me, uh, picture from uh, chapter one, our first module, and sort of looking at the entrepreneur's path. And uh, it's very, very interesting. You know, as we discussed then, if you look at the top, and a lot of times we hear stories, right? We either read or hear, or perhaps you've listened to a recent podcast of an entrepreneur and really kind of their journey. And when we we, as they're telling their story and as their narrative goes, it seems like such a simple journey, right? Um, you know, they had a product or a service. They had this brilliant idea. They developed a team. And next thing you know, uh, they can't keep up with production because the success is just amazing, right? And, you know, if you hear that and we feel that, all of a sudden that's the path uh, that we think all entrepreneurs are. There's, there's this uh, site at the end, and we're just getting there. Quite frankly, though, that's uh, I think that's what the press and the media, you know, or the storytellers from a public relations standpoint would like for us to believe. But quite frankly, it's a it is much much different than that. Um, you know, and really, it's it's peaks and valleys and challenges, and we've got points of friction, which we talked about in the last module. And really kind of looking at way stations or points of our, our journey. And we kind of, you know, in a lot of ways and sort of reflecting on this, sometimes we take one step forward and three steps back, right? And that can certainly happen. And, you know, if you look here in the center, um, I like this uh, particular picture because in the center, uh, we've got water and a boat and who knows which way we're rowing. Um, if you've ever been on a boat or if you've ever sailed, um, a lot of times it depends on where the wind takes you or uh, how much power you have in your oars and in the team to get you there. So to my point, you could take, uh, you know, you could float ahead a little bit and then next thing you know, uh, you're, you're way back uh, further than you were. So again, you know, knowing this, right, knowing that the top is sort of the story that everyone would like to tell, but if you look at the bottom, that's quite frankly uh, the journey that most uh, most entrepreneurs take. Knowing that, we really want to put together some tools and resources and a mindset such that as entrepreneurs, we can evaluate um, things in a much more um, methodical way, right? Um, still a lot of ambiguity, still a lot of unknown, still a lot of challenges, even knowing all of this. So again, going back to module two, when we're looking at analogs and antilogs, we've learned, right? We've had this learning part, but we still don't know what we don't know, right? Which is kind of an interesting uh, uh, challenge that we're in. You know, when we start to look at um, entrepreneurship and we really kind of uh, take a step back and try to understand 
um, what does it take? What is it that we need? And a lot of times, um, you know, we look at boldness and courage and and we, the author, you know, of our book, Getting to Plan B, you know, you look at uh, Mullins and Commissar and they start talking th- uh, talking about um, leaps of faith and, and really building this sense of courage and at some point jumping in and learning from what we just came about. And here's a, you know, there's all kinds of quotations. In fact, I'll try to post, just read a great, great article today um, in Inc. Uh, magazine, Inc.com. You know, and, and so we have we always find these sources of knowledge, sources of inspiration or sharing of expertise. And this is one from the Weather Company uh, or the folks at the Weather Channel. And this is Bryson Kohler, Chief Information Officer. And he basically says, quote, take the risk. Be aggressive, push hard, and set your sights way, way, way farther out than you think you can get. Drive your team forward every day. That way, if you don't get all the way to the goal line, you've at least gone further than you would have had you tried to de-risk the project up front, Um, unquote. The whole point here is get in the arena. At least try, right? Right. Um, and I'm not saying that uh, if you read quotes every day, which I do, or you sh- read books, all of a sudden that inspiration drives success. But having that perspective, right, being able to take, um, you know, take that can-do spirit and knowing that you still have a lot of unknown, there's all this ambiguity, having the courage to jump in and, as the authors talk about, take the leap, so, you know, kind of as a reflect and recap and looking at module two, we know that analogs and antilogs uh, can only get us so far, okay? So, again, learning from what's gone right, learning from what's gone wrong, and really helping us to design, right, our business model, that can only get us so far. In fact, if you look on page 38, you know, of our book, you know, the author really talks about it. You know, and in fact, uh, he basically says, so as we saw in chapter one, we draw from our leaps of faith a few hypotheses that state that what we hope and believe to be true and when we then test them in some way as quickly and cheaply as possible and we measure the results. This is after, you know, he talks about just previously to that, um, we have exhausted our ability to learn from other companies. Their examples would have given us good enough answers, right? Right. To some of our questions, and we could move on. But analogs and antilogs, let's, let's focus on this. But when analogs and antilogs reach the limit of what they can tell us, we are left with leaps of faith, each driven by a burning question that we cannot answer without some real-world data, right? So the whole point that Mr. Mullins is trying to say here is, we have this, but it's not enough, right? So, you know, as the title slot, the title of the slide here says is that copycatting only works partially. It only gives us part of what we need to know. Um, and so uncertainty rules in startup processes, right? The key here is we need to differentiate, okay? What makes us, our product and our service, different from what's already on the market? What makes us different in what's already being delivered to customers, okay? And so our unique value proposition is who we are and what we're about and how we're going to solve the customers or the market's problems. So the gaps between what we, what we know based on our research and based on our studies and based on our learnings of analogs and antilogs that you know that can tell us really what opportunities we need to go after. What does our leap of faith, where do we need to go? What does that uncertainty help to tell us? What is that bridge that we need to take? Okay. The other part of this then is the, uh, the dashboards. So we talked briefly about uh, leaps of faith and dashboards in module one. And uh, dashboards help us to take uh, to keep a score. You know, we use the word dashboard, and I realize this is intuitive, um, and I'm probably over uh, analyzing this, but let me share it. You know, dashboard, obviously, think about your car, right, as you're driving down the road, and 
miles per hour. You know, we have we have uh, signs that are put up by the Department of Transportation. Those are called speed limit signs, right? And they tell us what we can and cannot do. And so whether it's 35 or 45 or here on campus at Virginia Tech, could be 15 to 20, those, right, we have to then look at our dashboard. How are we measuring against that, right? Another one's fuel, whether it's empty to full and how are we measuring? When do we need to refuel? When do we need to go to the gas station and put more energy into our into our vehicle? The analogy here of, you know, we need to measure uh, whether we have enough resources and do we need more monies from the bank and these types of things. And then I could keep going. But the whole point here, uh, you obviously get it, is that we're keeping score, right? Uh, whether it's a dashboard or a scoreboard, um, this is a very, very um, important tool for us as founders and us, um, you know, within the new venture. We use dashboards all the time in my organization, uh, whether it's from a financial perspective, project management, sales and marketing, top line revenue. Um, all of that is a very, very important uh, piece. You know, uh, the, the book kind of gets into what I think is a is really a very, very good story. Now, some of you may look at this, uh, this lemonade stand and think, how simple could we be, right? But actually, sometimes looking at uh, simple stories and kind of putting things or help to put things into perspective. So, um, you know, one of the one of the things many of you may have taken management 1104 foundations of business in your first year here at Virginia Tech. Um, you know, as part of your uh, as part of your pamphlet requirement classes, and you know, you had this food stand, right, which is very very similar to Johnny's lemonade stand. And you know, the goal here is is that even as simple as a lemonade stand, people can learn from what they're doing. The key here is is they're doing. So we we've we've got some studies. We understand. So if you look here, um, you know, at the hypothesis, you know, from a from a first period or first time, you know, the hypothesis was to at least to have at least 10 customers per day, right? That was the hypothesis. Just get 10 customers per day. The metric, pretty simple. Just count the number of customers, right? But the actuality, so what was the score after day one? Unfortunately, only two customers, right? So um, the leap of faith, you know, was the commuters will stop and buy a refreshing drink. That's the leap of faith. That's what we want to happen, right? There's this assumption that people are thirsty on their way home and that commuters will stop. If you look then at uh, actual period two, um, unfortunately, no one stopped in the rain, right? So obviously in that particular, it was raining that day and no one really wanted to stop, roll down their window and get their car wet, right? This type of thing. Um, then you moved into day three, and all of a sudden, six customers, right? So, um, you know, up to 60% um, kind of getting in there. But here's the part. We want to then step back. What did we learn? What's the reflection um, that we gained during this hypothesis? You know, the insights obtained. And here, what are the pivots that we need to make, right? Or as the slide talks about, what course corrections are needed? All right, so think about it. You know, you're you're on this journey. What, where do we need to go now, right? And we're we're learning as we go. And you know, on this particular example, right, high pricing uh, deterred sales. Um, you know, they look but they don't buy. Think about it from your perspective and your customer experience journey. Uh, when you go in and you have an expectation of a product, and you you have what we call sticker shock, right? You look at it and go, oh my goodness. Um, that's that's that price is higher than the value that I perceived it to be, right? Um, and you know, quite frankly, just to finish out uh, hypothesis one, right on this leap of faith one is that seems like demand is somewhat less than Johnny thought, right? So again, wanted ten customers per day, um, you know, finally got to six, but at the end of the at the end of it here, the reflection was. Uh, you know, the insights obtained was high pricing deterred sales. So the leap of faith looked at people will pay um, a premium price. So let's assume that people will pay a, a premium price, right? So let's test that. 
Um, and let's put, let's, we have to have something that is specific and measurable. So $1.50 per glass will be acceptable. That's the hypothesis. And you may say, holy cow, I'm not paying a buck fifty for a glass of lemonade. But that's the hypothesis. That's what we want to, uh, to get. So total sales and price paid, uh, the metric, right? So total sales and price paid. Um, so obviously with two customers, we had $3, right? Uh, $3 total, $1.50 per, per glass. And then on the actual period three, we, we gained $5.50 in sales, one at 50 cents and five at uh, $1. So here's what we learned on the leap of faith, right? On our second hypothesis is $1.50 is too high. And, uh, and in pricing then reduced to a dollar. So keep in mind, it was a buck 50, right? Um, then moved to a dollar. And a dollar looks about right based on Wednesday's lower pricing. So, again, gaining insight, gaining knowledge, right? So, think about your food cart in 1104. And what were some of the lessons learned in management 1104 when you were going through that journey, right? Uh, perhaps, you know, there was a dollar for donuts, one donut, and all of a sudden when you made it 50 cents, um, you know, the revenue or the, uh, the number of sales, visitors tripled, perhaps, in that regard. So um, the whole point here is having a hypothesis, right? Excuse me, having a leap of faith, understanding what we want to test through that leap of faith, through a hypothesis, then gives us really some, some insights um, and ways to kind of pivot. One of the things that you know, I work at the uh, Corporate Research Center in, in Blacksburg, the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. And a lot of times, you know, I have mentors and people that I go to there. It's a phenomenal uh, opportunity to network and grow, um, you know, 3,200 employees, 183 companies. The whole point of that is I've got people I go to to get questions asked, and then people come to me. Um, so I get a lot of startups uh, that come in, and one of the things they'll say is, you know, we've been just grappling with the, when do we go to market? When do we do something? And, you know, at some point you have to take a leap of faith. And it's interesting. Those are sort of the words I've used over the last four or five years is at some point you have to move, right? You've got to get, um, you've got to get some scientific input. And the best way to do that is to start engaging with the customer, right? And in this case, Johnny's engagement was with the lemonade stand, right? And learning from that um, experience. So moving on, um, another part here, and obviously whether it was Johnny or your experience in management 1104, or perhaps your customer experience um, in something that you've recently purchased, um, or been involved in, and that's the uh, customer empathy maps, which you know you worked on uh, from module two. And again, I always say the best way to learn whether we are doing the right things from a from a sales perspective, right, or the best way for us to understand more about our customers is getting out of the building, number one, and going to see them, and learning to listen, and then listening to learn. So it sounds simple, but learn to listen and then listen to learn. And what I mean by that is start engaging with the customer. And so from a, a startup standpoint and founder standpoint and company standpoint, we have to understand what the customer's hearing, thinking and feeling, what do they see and what do they say and do, okay? Uh, what they what they do is an important part for us to so all of that okay what the customer's behavior is where do they go what do they do um, all of that is an incredibly important part for us and quite frankly I have seen uh, I've seen startups fail at this and then I've seen 100 year old companies fail with this go back to Coca Cola 1984 which ironically. Um, they have just relaunched that new Coke formula, right? Um, but at the end of the day, they did not listen to what the customers were saying and what they were doing. So at the end of the day, um, hearing, thinking, feeling, seeing, saying, and doing are what customers do. All of that then tells us what their pains are 
and what their gains are, okay? And that tells us, right, that gives us intelligence and insights for us to build upon, and we must pay attention to that. Um, some characteristics of a great hypothesis, right? So we talk about leap, leap of faith, and then leaps of faith are parts of a hypothesis, right? So we have to learn. We have to be able to take that leap of faith, but in a scientific, data-driven, insight, intelligent outcome is really what we're looking for. And so here we, we call it FAME, right? F-A-M-E, um, focused. We really only want to look at one variable, okay? What do we, what is it that we want to test, right? What is that uncertainty? What are we trying to do um, in that aspect? And, you know, we have to pick that one variable such that we can keep that constant and learn from that, okay? Um, the other part of a great hypothesis is if we take a specific action, then what will our outcome be, okay? Think about this in your own life, right? If I do this, then I expect that, right? If I study for two hours, I would expect to get a C. If I was to study for three hours, I would expect to get what? So these are types of action, right? They have to be action-oriented, and we have to be able to understand that and, quite frankly, actually role-play this out, right? So, um, you know, as a founder, you have, you know, you have resources around it, and you have to be able to build this out in such a way that we, we are focused on only one variable, right? What that leap of faith is. Um, what are, what's the one thing that we're trying to answer? What's that uncertainty? What's really bothering us, right? And then if we take that action, right, then what do we expect the market to do? If we take a certain action, what will the customer do, say, feel? What will, what will happen from that? Quite frankly, again, all of this is built on analogs and antilogs, right? So um, that part. The other one is, um, as I just mentioned, is measurable. So measures important behaviors and outcomes, okay? This is where paying attention to what customers and or the market is doing is incredibly important, okay? So it is something that has to be measured uh, are measurable. What, you know, again, go back to the empathy map, okay? And so if we do action X, how do they see? How do they say? What do they do? How do they feel? Where are they going in that stance? And then ultimately, all of this, and again, we've talked, we talked about it in module one, the goal here is we want to make money, right? We want to make money. So there has to be some type of economic oriented uh, piece here. We really want um, this to have a revenue. So it really, you know, the results here and a quantifiable changes to um, the unit economics of our business model. And what does that mean? Think about the lemonade stand, right? Our goal here is, is to have cash coming in. Obviously, you want more cash coming in, the revenue to exceed the cost. So certainly we want Johnny's lemonade stand to bring in more than we're paying for cups and lemonade, sugar, that type of thing. But the whole point here is, is that we want to have an impact to our business model from an economic standpoint, right? So that's fame, um, which are characteristics of great hypotheses. So if we look at the composition of hypothesis, right? Um, you know, if you look at a, um, a customer segment, the problem, solution, and then the success met metric, these are all key elements of what a hypothesis looks like, right? So we have our statement, the hypothesis statement, uh, which is very important, but we're really kind of touching the customer, again, through empathy. What is it that the problem that they are faced with? We Sometimes you'll hear, love the problem, so we really want to get in and dissect what that problem looks like. What is it, what solution are we trying to drive towards, and then how at the end of the day, are we going to measure that? What's the success metric look like? So with that being said, I'm going to close out module three. I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in and listening. Certainly, if you have any questions, um, anytime, feel free to contact me. Email is listed there. Uh, feel free to give me a call or send me a text. I definitely want you to, uh, 
to reach out if you have any questions, thoughts, or uh, any. So with that, take care. We'll talk to you soon.